You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Although Hidden Traps is not officially released until August 1st, you can pre-order your paperback or ebook copy now from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit BlackWolfPublications.com for more details. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put Invent Help in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. This is Larry W.A.C.H.S. saying uh, this is Larry W.A.C.H.S. saying follow me on Twitter at House of W.A.C.H.S. And download the House of WACHS Modcast app on iTunes and Google Play. Last time you were here, we were talking about the Book of Q, and I started right. reading into it. And, man, there is some stuff in there that I've, I've thought about, and I'd love to talk about it with you. The Q phenomenon. The Q phenomenon. Q's been dropping the hints about, you know, what I've said before. The, uh, Trump has uh, been asked by the military to run for president, win, and then let them beat back the bad guys domestic and foreign. And that's what's going on. What I think has happened, just my observation of reading it, following for the past three months, seeing where it's going. It, it, I think it's a it's not Trump. I think it's somebody. It's a Trump operation. It's a Trump approved operation because he saw that he can't get his message through the mainstream media. Right. You know, any, anytime he's on the mainstream media, he sends out codes on Twitter. He sends out codes. Those tweets are constructed to deliver a message to particular people, notably the, the bad guys, the criminals in our midst. You know, he's calling out Kim Jong-un. I got a bigger button than you. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's classic, right? That's just classic sure. trolling. That's right. what you do. So I think Trump and his team have figured out that the real action is happening on the basement level of the Internet, which is 4chan and 8chan. And next level up, Reddit. Mm -hmm. And then next level up, Twitter. Next level up, Instagram. And then you're getting into the cha TV channels and the radio stations. I'm already seeing articles mocking, in, you know, like FARC.com, mocking the Q phenomenon mm. because they're afraid of it. Right. That's, that's the first show of fear that, it's, that there's something to it when the mainstream media starts mocking it because it filters up. And the mainstream media is like, you know, trying to bail, trying to bail water out of there, you know, the rising tide. Right. So uh, I think Trump and his team, what they did was they, they recognized 
that that's where the action is. They have these autistics on these message boards, in their basements, on the computers, the whole cliche. We, we all know some of them. They're wild about Trump. Whether you are or somebody else is not, it doesn't matter. These guys, these autistics who create the memes on the bottom rungs of the Internet, and they all started in 4chan and 8chan, okay. where people are anonymous, and they say whatever's on their minds. They use the F word. They use the N word. They freely. They don't care. It's it's kind of a test. If you can't stand those words, you don't belong in there. Mm. It's true freedom on the Internet, the closest thing we have. And so it all starts in there. And these guys love Trump because they see him as a real life Star Wars figure. They see him as, you know, he's fighting the empire, the evil empire. He's peeling back the matrix that we're all in. And they see this and it's like, he is a, he's a god emperor. This is this. They are so on the Trump train. It's ridiculous. And these are the people who make all the Internet memes. I mean, this is the way media is today. So Trump recognized that the establishment has the media backward. They they they're starting on the top and they're trying to filter down underground. He can't do it. So he's set up this whole Q thing phenomenon to address the people who actually make things happen in the popular culture. Uh. They're going to push this way up by summer. It's going to make sense to most Americans that, you know what, Obama and Hillary really committed treason. This is the definition of treason, and they need to go to jail. They need to be made an example of so our country doesn't become Venezuela wow. or North Korea. I mean, because that's what is going on. It's a war for, it's a battle for Western civilization to remain a factor without uh, the Eastern ways, the satanic ways, if you will. That's why that book was called The Satanic Verses, referring to the Koran. Right. Salman Rushdie thought they coincided satan is uh, uh islam is sa- a vehicle for satanists the battle has been going on and you've got uh trump seen as the guy who's leading the uh, the, the rebel alliance mm-hmm. we're the rebel alliance all the trump supporters and these guys made a choice they love star wars but the latest one sucks why because it went it went in favor of the empire mm. the social justice wars had all kinds of preachy messages from Disney. Oh, okay. But these these guys, these uh, autistic people on uh, the computers 24-7, they made a choice. Why the phony Star Wars? We have a real-life Star Wars mm-hmm. going on right now for the planet, for our freedom, for, our, for you know, America as the way we thought it was. And so they're on board. Like, they would die for him. And that's what you're dealing with. You, we finally tapped into a force in America that is stronger than the passion the Islamics are said to have for their cause. Wow. And most of that turned out to be phony. That was just funded terrorism. And those guys were pawns. They weren't committed to any religion. They were just mercenary pawns who were easily uh, replaced. True passion, the sleeping, uh, the dormant uh, passion of the American people to be free and inventive and creative and love their families has just exploded. And people will die for that. That's how the country was formed. Right. People are willing to die for the right to be left alone for future generations and prosperity. So that never went away. It was just dormant, and now it's being lifted up by its hairs by the president. Three months to get the discussions going about some really deep, dark stuff that is going on. Who owns the big banks? Who, the, one family. This is why, and they're the cause of all the turmoil. Who owns all the religions? The Vatican. Right. You know, and you know they're all using each other, these three entities. The Vatican, the Rothschild, who, uh, bankers, and... Um, Oh, Saudi Arabia mm. is, are the three entities who control the world, global events. And we've been under their control. And we've, uh, control of our own sovereignty has been ceded from these awful politicians. We've been sold down the river to other countries. And we're infested with operatives and evil people. So he's trying to clean that up. He's trying to clean that up and, and get it out. So I think this it was a Trump operation where his team of communicators said, let's go to the basement, communicate with them, and they'll feed it up because they're into it so much. They're the leaders in piecing together all the dots, and eventually it'll float up to the mainstream because they took the first year to get all the evidence for the indictments, make all the indictments. At the end of the year, there's thousands of indictments waiting to be unsealed, and we can guess who that is, Okay, people at high levels of government. See, whatever they say, they're already six months ahead of what they're saying. Like when Trump tweets out something about Kim Jong-un, He's already decided how it's going to play out six months ago. And this is just part of the plan to communicate. So he knew that communications was so important that those people would get the breadcrumbs and put it together and and work on the problem, crowdsourcing the problem 24-7 until it filtered up. And everybody finally could say, even the uh, dumbest guy who's caught on live PD would be able to say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, they're the bad guys. Hillary and Obama, they fooled us. They lied. They, They tried to get us killed. Yeah, 
I think they should be put on trial at the very least. At least put on trial. Let's hear what's going on. And so you have to do that with the public or else you're going to have chaos. You're going to have, you're going to, have to implement martial law. People will be too shocked. If, if he went into office and two months later said, putting Hillary in jail, as I promised, people wouldn't accept it. And you got to win over the public. Wow. And he proved that by getting to be president. Why would he abandon that philosophy? You got to keep the public on your team. They're the most important people. If you do a whole campaign that says, I'm going to think about American citizens first and sometimes only, well, then you can't turn around and say, I'm going to lay this information on you that some of you will not be able to handle. Many of you will not be. Able- You're going to lose everybody. Right. So you got to do it smart. You know, you got to brand it. You got to brand the people slow. But it takes a couple. I think this year we're going to start to see the indictments and the prosecutions at the end of this year. And then um, 2019, you're going to see some jail sentences being handed out to very high level people. I just I simply adore the Star Wars analogy because I'm thinking of Trump as Master Yoda and he's draining the swamps of Dagobah. And he has all of these followers coming to visit him. Because we, the, the Rebel Alliance needs the, the guidance and leadership because the Jedi Council mm-hmm. has been in hiding or wiped out completely. Yeah, corrupted. So this is it. This is our chance to take back the universe. So you can understand galaxy. if you like that story and Star Wars was immensely popular. Sure. If you take the people and there's millions of them who like that story and you say to them, how about this real life Star Wars I got going on? Are you interested in joining me? Uh, yeah, right. of course. So you can see why this is an unstoppable force that's going on. This is a once in a life, not even a generation. This is a once in a hundred years thing that's happening. And we're in the middle of it. And it's very exciting and fun to watch. My friend, what if I told you that there's no such thing as aliens, but some of the people that claim they've been abducted and have actually had experiences with aliens aren't lying. How can both of those be true? Well, when we return, we welcome guest Gary Bates, CEO of Creation Ministries International, to discuss that. Get your third eye poked right after this. Hey, everyone. This is Jenny Earhart with the Southern Sisters Radio Program. Tune in to our show every Saturday at noon on AM 920, where we talk about life, love, happiness, lots of Southern food, and Southern culture in general. You can also catch our show live on Facebook. So check out our videos at Southern Sisters with Jenny Earhart. Southern Sisters Radio, the show for Southern women and the men who adore them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wentz World. I am so excited to have Gary Bates on today. Gary's CEO of Creation Ministries International and one of the executive producers of Alien Intrusion. This movie came out. It was a one day only experience. I saw it at the AMC movie theater here in Kennesaw, Georgia. It's coming out on DVD later on this year, I believe in March. Gary, welcome to the show. How are you? Uh, great. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I got to tell you, it was such a good and fun, informative and entertaining movie to see. And there's so many pieces to it that I kind of want to pick apart and ask you about. So let's start with this. Any sci-fi movie, television show or book leads us to believe that intergalactic or interstellar travel is possible with the right ship, per se. And a lot of these stories are based on creatures that are way advanced, right? Creatures from that are light years ahead of us in terms of intelligence and technology. But the movie Alien Intrusion really shed some much-needed light on this topic. Well, yeah, Creation Ministries International, we're a scientific organization. We employ more PhDs than uh, any Christian ministry in the world. And we dealt with some of the science, but as you saw, the the movie is an entertaining movie. I mean, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi fan. I was lining up the door at the door to see the latest Star Wars like anybody else. Yeah. But it is it is science fiction. So we kind of delve into whether that is possible. You know, can you accelerate a spacecraft up to warp factor five in a fraction of a second? And it's not a matter of advanced technology and developing craft that go faster or anything like that. It's just physically impossible understanding the laws of physics that govern our universe. And so once we kind of peel those layers off, then we say, but here's the issue. People really are seeing things. And, you know, you may have seen it. It's particularly disturbing when you hear Air Force officers at at a Washington Press Club conference giving testimonies that these balls of light have been tracked on radar going over over 7,000 miles an hour doing right angle turns and even affecting the operational readiness of our nuclear weapons. And so there is a small percentage that defy these naturalistic explanations, but scientifically, of course, we can't test that. So then we delve into the area of people who claim they've had first-hand encounters 
with entities that have appeared to them, and these entities call themselves aliens. And I think the power in the movie there came from the fact that this wasn't Christian saying this. These were people having experiences. And then we went to the non-Christian ufologists, the, the abduction researchers, and they're the actual ones that said this phenomenon was spiritual in nature. That it's not coming from us, you know, from a galaxy far, far away, as Hollywood would say, as UFO hunters on the TV would say. This is uh, what I've been saying to people on Facebook uh, today: is that it's an inconvenient truth for someone, but it fits right in the wheelhouse of biblical Christianity because we've always believed and understood that there is a spiritual dimension to our universe, and spiritual beings have come over from that realm into our own. And, you know, we can talk a little bit about the nature of that, if you like. Absolutely. Some of the questions that these abductees had answered, essentially, by their encountered beings were, where do you come from? Why are we here? And what happens when we die? This is kind of consoling to any human being. That was one of the most fascinating concepts in this movie, is those three questions were answered. And these are three questions that have been asked by philosophers and religious leaders for thousands of years? Well, I don't think it's just religious leaders that ask that question. I think every single human being who can put a rational thought together has always questioned, where do we come from? You know, why am I here? What happens when we die? They're the the three big questions. Those questions form the basis of what we call a worldview. And here's the kicker, because what you believe about where you came from is the key question, because that will determine the answers to number two or three. If you and I are just evolved pond scum, you know, which is what evolution says, then there's no meaning and purpose to life. And when you die, you you know, you just return to dust, that's it. But if the Bible's true, we are created with meaning and purpose, and, of course, we know where we go when we die. That's, That's our choice while we're on this earth. But now we have this alien question, and the most, one of the most popular views, even in the scientific area today, is that aliens might be our creators. Right. So then that, we've got to use that to answer questions two and three. And, and Nick Redfern, who is a secular UFO researcher, has written over 40 books, is, is the UFO hunters and the ancient aliens guy on the History Channel. He's the one that says people's worldviews are changed as a result of this alien encounter. And that's a secular UFO researcher saying that. My friends, if you're just joining us, we are with Gary Bates, CEO of Creation Ministries International. Gary, one of the most reoccurring themes that I saw and heard throughout Alien Intrusion was that these encounters have been going on since recorded history. And not everybody saw spaceships, but they saw things that were relevant to their culture at the time. This is absolutely mind-blowing from a logical standpoint. From the spiritual side of things, it's understandable. Because Christians, I mean, we believe some weird things. Let's be honest. A resurrection from the dead example, number one. But from a scientific or skeptic viewpoint, this is weird stuff. Sure. Well, again, uh, people don't have to believe little Gary Christian here because this is what the secular researchers are showing, that this phenomenon has been with us throughout, throughout uh, for as long as we've had recorded writings, and it's manifested itself into a form that the culture would understand. So the you know American Indians say they saw flying canoes with people on board. The ancient Romans and the Greeks had flying shields, etc. Uh, years ago, people had encounters with fairies that eerily marry, marry, uh, mirror, if you like, the UFO phenomenon or the abduction phenomenon today. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of interviews, you know, prior to the movie on secular uh, radio and TV and that type of stuff, and they're really curious why a Christian uh, is interested in, and how it even aligns. And I keep pointing out that the nature of the phenomenon, uh, we align very, very well, our Christian interpretation, with the secular interpretation, although we might disagree about the origin on it. Right. And so when I say things like this, I say, well, the Bible's always explained there's been a, a spiritual realm. And those these creatures, angels, and I have to point out, and I forget the culture, cultural pop view of angels as being ethereal spirit beings, you know, with fairy wings. That's never how the Bible records them, never once. When they appear, they appear physically. They sit down, they eat with people. They've changed our environment, our nature, that, you know, affected the weather. Uh, they've uh, harmed people on occasions, even killed people. 
And if I was a secular ufologist listening to that, I'm just checking off boxes. Yep, 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 because that's everything that appears in the UFO phenomenon. And in fact, just this morning, just on the eve of doing this interview with you, I've received an email from a high-ranking official in MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, who we featured. They're the world's largest UFO investigation or, or group in the world. And he's an interim board member. And he says, I believe I'm probably going to be the highest-ranking person in MUFON to completely agree with your take in that movie. And it's something that we've known for years that this is a demonic deception masquerading itself as, as, you know, glorious spacemen from another planet. Now, Gary, it's my understanding that in the Bible, it's clear that there are fallen angels and angels that are still loyal to God because angels do have free will. But there are also demons. And in my view, there is a distinct difference between demons and fallen angels. Have you found a similar viewpoint? Uh, yeah, there is, uh, and uh, it quite it shocks people when you first uh, first mention this. I think there's uh, an episode in the Old Testament that indicate that they're different because angels don't require bodily habitation because they, when they appear, they appear in their own form. They're physical. They have names, angels like uh, Michael and Gabriel, but in the New Testament, the word evil spirit and demon seems to be interchangeable distinct from angel and we have uh, them seem to require some sort of embodiment so think, think about that passage where it says you know an evil spirit went out of a man and then he came back and found the house clean he went back and got seven other spirits and the man was in worse shape than himself now if you if you change the word evil spirit to angel it kind of doesn't fit that right. seven angels came back into the man but seven evil spirits now Again, the spirit is not the sum of who we are. It's, you know, you and I, the Bible would indicate, we are actually right now spiritual beings, but we're also physical. So it's not the sum of who we are. But here we have these evil spirits, demons, if you like, are being cast out of a man, a number of them, legion, for example, and they ask to be sent into a herd of, or a group of pigs, a swine. And so it seems that somehow these are distinctly different and require embodiment. So I think there are two, two areas where we are being affected from the spiritual realm. Yes, one by fallen angels and one, if you like, from the demonic realm. And we have to be a little careful of extrapolating too much because, as I said, we, you and I can't physically test that. We can only get insights from Scripture. Right. One is clearly the Lord Jesus gives us a bit of a heads up to be very careful about signs and wonders and people being deceived. He actually says, you know, people being deceived by evil spirits. But there's a warning in Galatians uh, from Paul that says, even if we or a, an angel from heaven should preach another gospel on the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. There's, history is replete with people having this visitor experience and starting their own religions like Mormonism mm -hmm. and and Islam, based upon this visitor experience. But here's something that's interesting. When you go back, right back into uh, the Old Testament, and the, uh, where we've got Moses and Aaron standing before Pharaoh. And, of course, it records that Aaron throws down his staff or his stick, and it becomes a snake, and then Pharaoh's conjurers or magicians do the same. And whenever I ask Christians and say, well, can you remember what happened? And... Um, they say, yeah, uh, Aaron's snake ate up the other one. I said, but think about that. What was the conjurer's snake? And they say, well, it must have been an illusion. But I say, hang on, Aaron's snake ate, <laughs> physically ate the other snake. Mm. So somehow they even manipulated matter, you know, demonic forces manipulated matter to have some sort of physical form like a snake actually appeared. I'm not giving them the power of creation because only God does that, but it gives us an indication there of how deceptive forces can manifest something physically in our realm. And as I've said, UFOs are seen on radar. They leave traces. People who have encounters in their rooms, they have scratches, marks on them. They feel like they've been physically interfered with. So 
Yes, it's spiritual, but spiritual just doesn't mean ethereal. It somehow manifests physically in our realm. And and I definitely don't want to dwell on this too long, but I also think that there's a missing link here. And nowhere in Scripture can I find that demons are created beings. It seems to me that there's some sort of transaction that took place early on, perhaps in the the early chapters of Genesis. Genesis 6 mainly is where I want to focus just for a minute or two, uh, where the angels fell and they found human beings to be beautiful. Do you think perhaps there's some truth to the the theory that there was some some breeding going on between angels and human me- beings, and perhaps the offspring of this transaction were the giants of old, the men of renown that are described, and and also then that perhaps the flood was a means of God to wipe the earth clean of these uncreated beings that were tarnishing His creation. What say you on that? Well, uh, very interesting. You sound like you've done your homework, and I normally don't uh, talk about this in interviews, but uh, let me just say here, the movie Alien Intrusion, Unmasking of Exception, is based upon my book called Alien Intrusion, UFOs and the Evolution Connection, which has actually just, in the last week, after 13 years, become the number one selling UFO book on Amazon, curiously. Curiously written by a Christian. It's actually previously been an Amazon top 50 bestseller amongst all rankings. But the reason I mention that is in that book, I actually have a whole chapter dedicated to this view. There are four views on who the sons of God were in Genesis 6. And now it's been statistically shown that the view of the, all the early church fathers um, believed that the sons of God were angels. The term there is Bene Elohim. Mm-hmm which literally means sons or direct creations of God. Now, in the New Testament, we're called sons of God, but that's because we are born again. And everywhere the term sons of God is used in the Old Testament, it refers to angels. It's the same term that's used when the sons of God came to present themselves before God early on in the book of Job, you know, when Satan brings his accusation. And so there is a theological view, and this was actually held by the early church fathers. You can statistically show this that the sons of God, yes, took after themselves the daughters of the, of men. They produced offspring. Now, you mentioned the giants, but in fact, the term giants is only used in the King James translation. Mm-hmm. Elsewhere, we see it untranslated. They're described as the Nephilim, mm-hmm. and the Nephilim literally means fallen ones. Mm-hmm. So then you've got to ask, if these are human offspring, why does God automatically say that they are fallen? Because he gives every human being the chance of redemption. He's not willing that any should perish. And there are other accounts later where we see the term the Nephilim used in Numbers 13 when Joshua and Caleb and the spies go into the land, but they brought back a bad or evil report. The actual word for evil or bad report is the Hebrew term dibba, which means to lie or slander and defame. So clearly, 10 of the spies, not Joshua and Caleb, brought back a lying report because they didn't have the stomach to go and face uh, these uh, the inhabitants of the land. And of course, 40 years later, after they've been sent to dwell in the wilderness for disobeying God, they come back into this country where this Nephilim is supposed to be dominating, and they're not there. They've suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. Well, the reason is they were never there in the first place. So here's the point you're getting to, and that, uh, that you know, angels cohabited with women produced this kind of hybrid offspring, and, and uh, yes, are they the demons of today? Because they were destroyed in the flood. They can't go to heaven. They can't go to hell because they're not humans. Angels uh, in the long term uh, are going to be destroyed, which is why they're on a search and destroy mission now to take down as many humans as they can. But you have these spirit, spirit beings, which you might call demons, the offspring of uh, uh, the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, if you like, that are roaming the earth, looking to inhabit people, and other things and cause havoc. havoc. And I put all four views. The other views is that they are the sons of Seth, um, the demonically possessed people, or just just kings and rulers of the time. But I'd have to say, going from Scripture alone, Mm -hmm. the angelic view, the demonic view, I do believe is the one that holds water because... um, And it's very troubling. I mean, in some respects, I wish it wasn't true, uh, because we tend to uh, like, um, you know, <laughs> I think we tend to like non-spiritual explanations for things, but I believe that's what the scriptures say. Gary, thanks for being bold enough to share that. Yeah, in my mind, it seems as if seeds in genealogy are very important. So, for example, the story of the virgin birth, that's definitely a necessary means to an end in my mind, because 
if Jesus were born of mortal sperm, like his father before him, then he would have been tainted in the way that you and I are because we're born of human sperm. But Mary wasn't. She was impregnated by the spirit. Can you go into a little bit about the importance of that and if that plays a role in the greater scheme of things? Well, here's, here's what I would say. I think we've got to be too careful elaborating on that because Jesus was both fully God and man. He added, obviously, the human nature to his divine. Sure. But here's what I would say when we, when we look at all of this. We, we look through a glass darkly because you and I are time-bound you know, by the physics of this universe. We're, we're in this three-dimensional space. We can't go to that realm, but clearly that realm can come to ours. And the original purpose of angels what were to be ministering spirits to mankind, and some of those have rebelled and, and fallen. We get an indication. I've got a, a new DVD app called Creation Restored, and it's available on creation.com. And people kind of think that the new heavens and earth is going to be some ghostly ethereal place. But again, I can be absolutely categorically sure that is never how Scripture is painting it. Because we think of eternity as being a spiritual realm. You know, we get the idea of streets and seas and that the tree of life is going to be there. And uh, we're going to be, you know, we're talking about putting on new clothes uh, because of the new rebirth that we're having. And of course, there's that passage that reminds us that in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be transformed from perishable to imperishable. Right. But imperish- imperishable indicates some sort of form. And, you know, one of the things we wanted to bring out in the movie, which you sure saw, that, you know, we both live in Atlanta and we're right in the heart of the very conservative Bible Belt. And I go to, I'm a very conservative Christian. You know, I go to a Southern Baptist church. But we, if we're going to take the Bible at face value, it is clear there is a spiritual realm. Now, we tend not to move in those circles because as Christians, the enemy leaves us alone. He knows if he's going to manifest in a deceptive form as these people who are claiming alien abductions have, then you and I are pretty much going to know where it's come from. So one of the points of the movie was to create awareness that when you see all of these people around us who claim to be psychics and and having interactions with ghosts or even aliens, it is real. There's a reality going on around us. And sadly, as we showed in the movie, people have even approached the church, and this freaks them out so much Mm. Um, that they end up going to you know, ghost clinics or UFO clinics right. where they get accepted because they hear, we've got people just like you here, right. and that drives them deeper into the occult and the phenomenon. And if people are being spiritually affected, I said in the movie when I was interviewed there that this is right in the church's ballpark. It's right in our backyard, and we need to listen to people. We need to help them you know, get closure on their experience and show them that they are being spiritually affected. And, of course, we showed in the movie, even in this sci-fi age, Jesus was the answer because he was the only mechanism that could put an end to these terrifying experiences that people have. My friends, we are out of time, but this conversation continues. We are not even halfway through, and trust me, it gets even more in-depth than it's gotten Gary Bates, CEO of Creation Ministries International. Of course, you can connect with them online, creation.com. Also, alienintrusion.com is where you can pre-order the DVD. You can can also connect with them on Twitter at Creation News. Hey, everyone. This is Jenny Earhart with the Southern Sisters Radio Program. Check out our website at southernsistershome.com. We post all of our fabulous recipes every week on the blog section. We love to hear from our listeners. Email me at radio at southernsistershome.com. It's a whole new year of possibilities at the Gift of Music Foundation as we enter our third full year of serving students and music programs with instruments and music resources that otherwise would not be available to them. Please make a donation online today. The Gift of Music Foundation at giftofmusic.org. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. 
Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call The Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call The Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800 826 1246. That's 800 826 1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800 610 This is Jenny Earhart with Southern Sisters Radio, and I'm your Southern Sister. In case you didn't know, you can check us out every Sunday at 2 p.m. right here on KLRN. And I'd love to hear from you. Email me at radio at southernsistershome.com. Hey, everyone, this is Jenny Earhart with the Southern Sisters Radio Program. Check out our website at southernsistershome.com. We post all of our fabulous recipes every week on the blog section. We'd love to hear from our listeners. Email me at radio at southernsistershome.com. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Divisional round playoff time. Radio Griff, I am so excited. I just can't hide it. I feel like I can't even match your excitement. You're wearing all Eagles garb. All Eagles. You're ready for the game. I'm ready for the game. Huge match. Especially Huge match. Because it's the Eagles versus your hometown team. You know, the team that live, plays in your hometown. Exactly. Atlanta. Exactly. So the Falcons, Eagles, this week, you're psyched. I'm ready. Like I, You're doing it without your quarterback. Well, I have, uh, we have a fully capable quarterback in Nick Foles. A man threw 27 touchdowns and two interceptions in 2013. Yes, that was five years ago, but a lot of people that were good five years ago are still good now. Look, George W. Bush still on top of his game. Uh, Barack Obama. Donald Trump. St- Donald five years Trump. ago probably had the number one TV show in The Apprentice. Yep. Now he's president. Oh, by the way, think about this. That's Oprah, real news. Oprah went uh, running for president here. She made her fortune by giving things away. And yeah, yeah. Donald Trump hosted a TV show where he wanted people to compete for a job. That's basically the difference between Republicans and Democrats, wow. is it not? Whoa. I'm that, just saying the proof is in the pudding, folks. 
So here we go. Oprah doesn't eat pudding anymore. She's on Weight Watchers. She, oh, well, that's like 18 points. How many points, points. is that? That's yeah. 18 <laughs> for, the, for the chocolate pudding. I don't know how many for the vanilla or tapioca. But all that aside, here we are. I'm very excited. Griff, this Saturday is going to knock my sock. They're going to oh knock these goodness. leg warmers oh off that I'm goodness. wearing right now. I see those. It, it's warm outside today, and I don't know why it, you're wearing leg warmers. It is warm, but I, I'm, I was bumping the Flash Dance soundtrack on the way in. I, I just feel like I'm on four Red Bulls. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. And this Saturday divisional matchup as the ATLians travel up north to play the Philadelphia Eagles. First time in history that a one seed is a dog at home against a six seed. And that's simply because they don't have a quarterback, as I said earlier. No, I'm, I'm fairly certain we do have a quarterback. I, His name I, is Nick Foles. I don't, uh, you don't have a quarterback. Yeah, you know, I, everybody has been chirping about the last three or four games of the Eagle season, saying Nick Foles can't even complete a pass. He's awful. He has no creative ability in the pocket. He gets rid of the ball. He doesn't make his second or third read. He's a, a one-read quarterback. And I want to say that I believe that they are playing possum. They're not giving anybody any film to watch yeah. over the last several weeks. And word on the street is that he has looked phenomenal in practice this week. Phenomenal. What if this was all a plan? Maybe Wentz isn't really hurt. There was too much tape on Wentz. He uh-huh. was playing so well. They knew people were going to like overstudy. They realized they had a good team anyways. So that Wentz got an injury. Oh. I'm a Foles truther. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring in Foles because they know he's, as you said, fully capable. Right. Hey, because they're still a good team, even with them. So, yeah, I mean, maybe no tape probably on them. not. I mean, there's definitely tape from 2013. Uh, there's tape from when he stepped in in Kansas City for the Walrus. Big Red Andy Reid, who has officially been eliminated. Yeah. Uh, again, he can't win in the playoffs when it counts. It doesn't. Sh- ultimate choke job. He's just. That, a, that was bad. He should be the Falcons coach. Hey, He's now. such a choker. Hey. hey, I think they could use some help Or uh, there. the coach of uh, University of Georgia Bulldogs. Ooh. Is that too soon? I don't <laughs> think so. And, that, and, oh, that was heartbreaking, and, huh? I got to say that I'm so thankful that I woke up the next morning because I had to go to sleep. You know, I can't stay up till 1230 in the morning to watch a football game. These college football games are way too long. They are. I don't, I don't know, understand how, did, how does the NFL figure it out how to make it? It's usually almost three hours, three and a half max. Yeah. College, exactly. it's at least four hours. Yeah, I don't Guaranteed. get it. And I, you know if it's a championship game, it's going to overtime. That just seems to be the way it is these days. It's the clock stoppage before they move the chain. Yeah, that's a big part of down. It, yeah. Just let the clock run. I, I, you know, and this Kendrick Lamar fellow, what a snooze fest at halftime. I've heard his name, obviously, just being around. That was the first time I've ever actually seen him or seen him sing Me too, or man. rap. Me and too. I was like, meh. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not even like I'm not like big anti rap guy or whatever. Right, I'm not the biggest fan of that music, but I'm not like outspoken anti against rap. I wasn't impressed, but people swear he's like the greatest, latest, awesome thing. I wasn't into it. I wanted Taylor Swift, but I always look forward to the Dr Pepper halftime scholarship throw. That's the fun part for me. Well, they do that like in the championship games now. They don't even do it during the finals, right? Well, they should be doing it in the in like the, the national the, championship, the conference championship games. It should be. It should, wouldn't that be awesome? That, that would be the best halftime yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, just seriously. do like have like ten of those back to back. If you yeah. have to fill up the whole time, we, that's right. People love it. Twitter loves it. The last we time love the it. girl, the girl one. Yeah, and they do the chess passes, which are a real wimpy way to be doing it. They shouldn't be allowed to hey, do that. Hey, but it works. It does work. It that's works. why they do it. That's right. But that's way more entertaining. Than, uh, a lot of times, that's more entertaining than the games. Uh, sometimes you're right. That should be a sport in itself. I will say... Dr. Pepper football toss. I like it. I, I like it a lot. And I will say that this game was very fun to watch. I watched the rest of it when I got up the following Which morning. Which game? The Bulldog uh It was an entertaining Alabama. game, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun it, to watch. And you knew Georgia was going to lose. You just yeah, knew you it. knew they were going to choke it away. And they brought uh, Alabama brought in Tua, 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 Dude, I've never seen so many, somebody give so much praise to God in That's my whole life. That's what I was going to say. It was amazing. He loves Jesus. He loves him some Jesus. More than Tim Tebow, I think we should have a God fight. <gasps> oh. All right, who, who's, oh. The better, who's the better servant? Oh, to us, To a something or Tim Tebow? To Both a- names begin with T, though. Have you noticed the similarity there? Huh? huh? Maybe yeah. it's a, heaven is full of people whose first and last names begin with T. Tim Tebow. Oh, 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 oh truther. Just I'm a T truther here. <laughs> Double T truther. <laughs> Since we've la- wasted the last seven minutes of your time, here we go. We're going to get to these divisional games. <laughs> and we have a lot of facts here in Wentz World. 
uh, and a couple hot takes, but there's no denying that the Philadelphia Eagles have been disrespected all week. There's signs all around the NovaCare complex. You're two and a half point underdogs. There's no way you guys can win without Wentz. But I'm here to tell you that this Philadelphia Eagle team is going to shock the world, and they're going to roll. They're the this number Saturday. one seed. They're going to shock the world because they're they're underdogs at home in the playoffs against the choking Falcons. And the Eagles will win this game handily by at least two scores. That's my prediction. Handily. Wow. Handily. I think the Eagles are going to win. Everyone's hot on the Falcons. Everyone's all about, oh, the Falcons are the favorite. Uh, Eagles don't have Nick Foles. There was some guy on this uh, show about three minutes ago saying the Eagles didn't have a quarterback. I'm not sure who that was. But uh, (laughs) I believe Foles and the Eagles are going to get it done. I don't think the Falcons are going to go up to Philly and win this game. Everyone's, like you said, dog in Philly. No one's giving them a shot in this game. They're the number one seed. They're the, they were the best team in the NFC this year. Yep. And I think they still are the best team. The Falcons barely made the playoffs. They did look impressive last week, the Falcons did. And as a result, the Falcons are the team that, you know, they're the sixth seed that can make a run and go to the play, blah, 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 whatever. Falcons are losing this week. Go Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. And for those of you who are number crunchers, the Eagles are tied for first in all the league with a 162 point differential. So that means they've scored 162 more points than the opposition. They also led the league in rush defense, holding teams to only 79 yards a game and ranked first in the NFC in turnover differential at 11. And here's a fact that Falcons fans don't want to hear, but when Jay Ajayi matched up against this Falcons team and the Falcons were playing at home, He's the only back this whole year that had 100 or more yards against this Falcons defense. Dare I say, Uh that shall be a repeat performance this Saturday at Lincoln Financial Field. I think you're right. I I believe it. Eagles win. Falcons are going to have to start asking themselves real questions about these skill positions. Is Matt Ryan elite? Is Matt Ryan, noodle arm Matt Ryan, your guy moving forward? Just saying. Drop the QB. Think about it. Think about it. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. He's the real deal. I might become a Falcons fan. Is my second favorite team. I actually might like the Falcons. Would you call him Mr. Carb? I mean, look, think about it. Baker, Mayfield, Mayfield bread, huh? Think about Mayfield it. Mayfield dairy. Mayfield dairy. Oh, a double whammy. Celiac what? disease and lactose intolerance all in the same position. I love it. Baker Mayfield, future Atlanta Falcon. It could happen. Look, it's time to think about that, Falcons fans. Trade Matt Ryan while you can. Get something for him. Trade him while you can. Trade him to like not? Arizona. They need a quarterback. He seems like a... He, Carson Palmer. They like the old guys out there. They do like the old guys. So that's sit- where people go to retire. Exactly. That's perfect. Yep. We figured it out. We solved it. Wear your knee-high socks. Go play bridge in the afternoon before and after Matt practice. Ryan's an old man. He is an old man. Just about to be a first-time dad, but he's still an old man. And Ship look, him to Arizona. Didn't practice this last Tuesday. What's going on per- at home? Personal matters. Personal, yeah, personal matters, but the week of a playoff game to miss practice, they must be severe personal matters to I hope miss every- that honestly, time. Honestly, I hope everything's okay. Well, of course. Nobody but- wishes any ill. But, you know, th- that's something to think about. What's it going is. on? It is. Undisclosed information? Uh-oh. If it's not serious, why not come out and tell us what was going on? You know, his mind is elsewhere right now, so that's something to keep uh-oh, in mind uh-oh. of. Go Ship him to trade Arizona. Him to, trade him to Arizona while you can, folks. I'm just saying. <laughs> They're going to have a new coach. Perfect time to it bring is. in a new quarterback. It is. I can guarantee you, we are the only show on the Atlanta Airwaves advocating for a Matt Ryan trade to the Arizona Cardinals. I think it's the most Exclusive logical Exclusive information. We're ahead of the curve here uh-huh. in Wins World. You, That's why you're listening right now. You broke the info that Bruce Arians was no more. I, did I break that here? You broke it here in I, Wins Because I heard Colin Cowherd say it, so I repeated it here. Therefore, I broke it here. Well, nobody listens to him. So no one in Atlanta. People heard it here first. I love of course, Cowherd. He's yeah. my second favorite sports host behind the wins. Well, you know, I would I prefer Cowherd to myself, <laughs> but that's okay. But we have that second Saturday game which I'm very excited about because the defending champions have their title on the line right now. They do. Against uh, the Tennessee Titans. and The Titans. Very interesting game. Very interesting Titan. game. Is it, though? Titans at Patriots. People are saying the tit- uh, the Patriots have a second bye week, basically, because they're playing the Titans, and the Titans like, probably don't belong in the playoffs. Uh, pretty rough there. You, you know some facts in this game, and this is the only fact I think you really need it on the Titans side. Mike Malarkey, the head coach, in his history against the Patriots, he's 0-6. Oh, it's time to be 1-6. and six. Is it? I don't I, think... Th- you know, here we go, though. Let's let's talk about off-the-field stuff the, oh, and what's been going on in the Patriots locker room. Look, the, Tom Brady's personal trainer, his guru, his sensei, his spiritual specialist has been banned 
from the locker room by Bill Belichick. There's rumblings between Kraft, Belichick, and Brady talking about that Garoppolo trade forced by Robert Kraft onto Bill Belichick because of Tom Brady's bruised, sensitive ego. That's all fine and dandy, but the Patriots aren't losing to the Titans. It's well, not, everybody it's not said happening. the same thing about the Chiefs, except for yours no. truly, who did pick okay. the Titans. Chiefs, Patriots, Bill Belichick, Andy Reid. Like, who's like clutch and who's not clutch? Belichick's not losing to Mike Malarkey. He never has, and he never will. Patriots are going to roll in this game. It's not even. I hope the Titans give him a game. I really do. It's just it's not going to happen. Upset special time, oh, baby! No. Oh no! It's going to happen. Look, I, I know people are like, "Oh, this is the hottest take of all time." This is the hottest. This is the tepid take of the year. <laughs> the Tennessee Titans roll into Foxborough. Everybody up there's. Fat and happy, they're sitting in snow, they're they're thinking about next week, right? They're thinking about Pittsburgh and the AFC championship game. But don't look past Tennessee because they find ways to win and they are gonna find a way this Saturday around what eight o'clock is when the game starts. It's gonna be nice and cold. Saturday night, eight o'clock. Yeah. Tennessee, I'm telling you, probably a very, very close game. But I'm I'm calling it right now. Tennessee upsets wow. New England in Foxborough because this infighting, there's more to this than they're leading on. Kraft came out and I'm debunked sure. it all. It's all speculation. Well, there's smoke, there's fire. I agree, but it's the Titans. But I will say this. Remember your... the Titans. There was a movie about the Titans. <laughs> I remember. You know, I, I said Mark Malarkey's 0-6 versus uh, the Patriots in his career as a head coach. However, Mike Malarkey is undefeated in the playoffs as a head coach. Ah. Uh... Last week was his first win, but hey, he's undefeated. He is he's undefeated. He's 1-0. He's going for two and oh. He's going to be two and zero according to the wins. Uh, imagine, I mean, imagine how good they feel after beating Kansas City, one of the toughest places to play. It Arrowhead. is, it is very loud. I, dare I say, louder than Foxborough? Nah, maybe the eight o'clock game. You know, it's going to be cold. People are going to be watching from home. Why buy tickets to this game? They're going to win anyway, right? 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 Patriots fans, now I ought to waste my money. I'm telling you, this game is for the Titans. I'm remembering the Titans, and oh. you shall remember this pick. Come Sunday morning. When they lose, you're going to forget this, aren't you? <laughs> we'll see. The first of these Sunday games, Jacksonville on the road, taking on the Stellars. And look, Jack's got a, a decent win on the road or at home last week. And it was closer than we all thought. Blake Bortles did not look that impressive. He had more rush yards more than rushing, pass yards. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. And I'm worried about this Jacksonville they team. They shut down Fournette. They, they pretty much shut down Fournette. I think, what did he have, like... 50 yards or something. Right. I mean, Bortles had more yards. Yeah. So, uh, yikes. So, it's not looking too hot. However, for, uh-oh. the Jags did, like, destroy the Steelers during the regular season in Pittsburgh. And it was Roethlisberger's worst game ever. Five interceptions or something like that. A lot of interceptions. They held Le'Veon Bell to 46 yards, I believe. This Jags defense is for real. Uh-huh. Saxonville. But. But do they travel well? I mean, they did in that game, but in the this, is, this is when it really counts. Yeah, and. Man. Everyone is, everyone's going, uh, uh, when everyone zigs, I zag, or when they zag, I zig, I guess, mm. this week. Except, not with the Titans game, you're the one who zigged and zagged on that one. Oh, yeah. Um, I think this is, Jaguars win this game. Wow. I think Jacksonville wins. Everyone's like, oh, Jacksonville did the regular season, but postseason is different, as we were just saying. I think Jacksonville's defense, man, and I think last week was kind of a wake-up call. Um, they're going to get Fournette going more this game. They've already shown that they can shut down the Steelers' offense. Yeah, the Steelers only scored nine points the last time these teams right. met in October. I mean, Big Bid and play, did play like his worst game ever. Yeah, but five picks. Maybe Oof. Jacksonville has his number. I picked the Jags in an upset this week. I like Jacksonville. I like the Steelers. I mean, they have 36 playoff wins, most in NFL history. They led the NFL with 56 sacks, and Mike Tomlin is an experienced postseason coach. Is he a good coach? I think he's a good motivator. I don't know if he's actually a good X's nose head coach. I think he's a good like uh, head of state. Yeah. Figurehead. So how do you feel about an all-Pennsylvania Super Bowl? Uh, I think it's not only possible, but probable, given that the Steelers will win this game. Wow. Wouldn't that be amazing? In Minnesota. <laughs> the Battle of the Keystone State in Minnesota. Sunday, 4 o'clock. Many say this is the best game of the week. I kind of have, I think we talked about it last week, I have NFC South fatigue. I think we oh, get a lot yeah. of NFC South here. Oh, the Saints, yeah. Saints Panthers last week didn't really do it for me. The Saints, I actually went out to eat during the game. I didn't really care. I was like, I kept it, you know, kept checking my phone. I watched the end of you it. You didn't care, but you just kept checking your phone. Yeah, but you know, it's like I'm not going to sit down for three or four hours and watch that game. It just doesn't do it for me. Were you Were you at the Golden Corral on Barrett? No, I I, dude, I don't need a buffet, dude. But oh, that buffet is—they've really stepped up their game. I, since I like the that. E. Coli scare. I go to Chewy's. <laughs> Saints at Vikings. Oh boy. Saints, eh, whatever, but Vikings, 
could they win this game when next week be playing the Super Bowl for the fir- first time ever happened, maybe at home? I don't know. I need some convincing. I need some facts to help tip the scales of justice here at Radio Griff. Mike Zimmer, the head coach of the Vikings, he's 0-1. In the playoffs. So he's never won in the playoffs. He's never ever. won. He's winless in the playoffs. It's the history of the Super Bowl era. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So you want some other facts? One, here? I, I need the facts. Let me uh, pull some facts Fresh out here. Fresh off the wire here. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Vikings all time in the playoffs, 19 and 28. Mm. Or the uh, Saints are 8, eight and 9. Mm. Um, Vikings lead the all-time series 21-11. Mm-hmm. Saints have won four of the last five. Mm. So uh, last game they played in September... Saints lost that game in Minnesota, twenty nine to nineteen. So those two teams did meet up early in the regular season, um, and the Vikings won that game. And I think that's going to happen again this week. I think the Vikings win this game. I think that defense is too tough. Um, I, 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 I think they win. I think- Saints, Saints had a tough game last weekend against Carolina. Yeah, it was I think tough. They, they had to throw a lot out there to win that game. And I don't think they're going to go up to Minnesota. Minnesota's jacked for this. I mean. Like I said, the potential to play the Super Bowl in your home stadium for the first time in NFL history. I think that has everyone jacked up there. I like Minnesota in this game. Though it will be negative 40 degrees in Minnesota and and the home fans are going to be excited, nice and shwilly. I do believe that the Saints roll from the Big Easy up to the Twin Lakes State. Is that correct? Twin Lakes State. Is it Twin Lakes? Twin Lakes. Yeah. Twin Peaks. It is. (laughs) The, is the five lakes twin, I'm very twin confused. cities? Twin cities. They well, have two lakes too. No, they have lots of lots of lakes. Lots of lakes. That's where, the Laker, that's where the Lakers came from. Two or, oh, Minnesota. That's right. Then they moved to Los Angeles, where there are no lakes because there's only fires and stuff. Only fires, fires and, and, and liberals. It's like synonymous. Liberalism and fire. Yeah? Huh? Think eternity, folks. Think about your viewpoints. Oh, no. uh, oh, anyway, no. here we go. Hey, send your cards and letters to at Radio Griff, <laughs> care of One's World Radio. GwinnettGobblers.com. GwinnettGobblers.com. <laughs> There's something about the Saints team. I, I think they're for real. Ingram and Kamara go off big time and take care of this Minnesota defense. And also, take care of them. Case Keenum is going to get Few, exposed. Fewest points per game allowed this year. Minnesota. It's a new season. Postseason's a new season. Fewest yards allowed a game. Minnesota. Huh? Second in both those categories, though, by the way, is Jacksonville. Mm. Like I said, Jacksonville's going to win. Minnesota win. Defense wins championships. As long as you have a serviceable quarterback, you can win. We've seen that time and time again. Your defense is so elite, your quarterback doesn't have to be elite. We saw that with the Broncos with Peyton Manning when he his arm was literally falling off. We've seen Trent Dilfer win Super Bowls. Yeah. Blake Bortles or Case Keenum win the Super Bowl. Not unfathomable. Nick Foles will win a Super Bowl He's this fully year. capable. F- fully capable. <laughs> So that's it. Holy cow. I, I got the Saints. So let's sum it up. We both have the Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. Right? Because we uh, both hate the Falcons. <laughs> Patriots, Titans, you have the you have the Cheaters, and I have the Titans. Okay. Right? Yes. Jacksonville, Pittsburgh. I'm taking Steelers at home. I'm taking Saxonville, baby. Oh, goodness gracious. Defense wins championships. And you hope to catch up to the wins here when I went forward I, I don't, last I, I'm week? about winning it from year on out. I don't care about the past. It's a new season, as you said. <laughs> I love it. And, of course, the late game, you got the Vikings. Yeah, because I don't like the NFC South, so I'm picking the Vikings. I- I'm going to take the Saints. Wins championships. So we're split. Case right? Keenum. So there are three games here that you could catch up on some ground. Yeah, we don't agree. Yep, th- we don't agree on three, but Embrace we have one in common. debate. Em- Embrace debate. Hashtag all lives matter. Hashtag Stephen A. Smith. In my view. So we never like to leave a oh, segment no. with Radio Grill. I don't know if I'm prepared for this. That's okay. I'll stall it out so you have time to look. <laughs> we never like to leave uh, a segment here with the great... At Radio Griff. Of course, you can follow him on Twitter at Radio Griff. Also, get redirected to his Twitter page when you visit uh, the GwinnettGobblers.com. G O B L E R S.com. Not dot net, not dot org, not dot gov, dot com. It's very important that you remember the last three letters. So, without further ado, the sage lyrical ability of one zombie, Tom Petty. I should have known it. My friend, there's no better time to grab another beer and hit the head and then grab another beer because about four minutes from now, Atlanta radio legend Larry W.A.C.H.S. comes back to Wen's World. We're talking about the Book of Q, a lot of unanswered questions about previous administrations, politics and society. This is fascinating stuff. Stick with us. More One's World when we return. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling 
calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. 